Hello, my name is Kusum Parekh. Today I'm going to talk about the microsomal protein binding of drugs. This is one of the many contract services that we offer at Sekisui Xenotech. Here is an overview of the presentation. I will start off with a brief introduction to what microsomes are and what is microsomal protein binding. Next, I'll proceed to why measuring microsomal protein binding is so important and the methods used to measure it. And lastly, I'll proceed with the study design that we offer at Sekisui Xenotech, followed by a data example. So what are microsomes and what is microsomal protein binding? Microsome is a type of hepatic in vitro test system used to evaluate the drug interaction potential of an investigational drug. Microsomes are the test system of choice in drug inhibition and drug metabolism studies. These are formed from the endoplasmic reticulum when the cells are disrupted and the homogenate is subjected to differential centrifugation. Microsomes contain CYP enzymes, UGT enzymes, amongst others. The drug that is bound to microsomes or is sequestered in the microsomes is unavailable for interaction with the CYP and UGT enzymes. So microsomes are prepared by centrifuging the homogenate obtained from the liver or cultured hepatocytes. The homogenate is centrifuged to separate into the S9 fraction, which is a supernatant, and the pellet is a cell debris. This S9 supernatant is centrifuged further at a very high speed of more than 100,000 G, and the pellet is the microsomes, while the cytosolic fraction is a supernatant. This pellet is resuspended and washed a couple of times and suspended in the solvent of your choice. Next, we proceed on to why is measuring microsomal protein binding so important? As per the 2020 FDA guidance, the measurement of microsomal protein binding is required for drug inhibition studies, but not for drug metabolism studies. This is a snippet from the guidance which states that microsomal protein concentrations are usually less than one mg per mil. The sponsor should correct for non-specific binding during the incubation if this binding is expected to influence the analysis of kinetic data. Non-specific binding can be measured experimentally using equilibrium dialysis or ultrafiltration or predicted using in silico methods. And also it gives us a better understanding of the relationship between in vitro metabolism and in vivo pharmacokinetics. That is the accurate, the, the more accurate the in vitro data can help us better understand the in vivo pharmacokinetics. Next, we proceed on to methods used to measure microsomal protein binding. There are three main methods, equilibrium dialysis, ultracentrifugation, and ultrafiltration. All these three rely on one basic principle, which is physical separation and measurement of the unbound and bound drug and to calculate the relative fractions. First, I'll discuss what equilibrium dialysis is. In equilibrium dialysis, there are two compartments which are separated by a semi-permeable membrane. If drug in solution is added to one chamber, over time it diffuses to the other side such that at equilibrium, equal concentrations of the drug are present on both sides of the chamber. As you can see on the right side of the slide, when you add the drug in the presence of microsomal protein, the drug immediately starts to bind to the microsomal protein and the unbound drug by, uh, migrates to the other side through the semipermeable membrane such that the unbound drug is in equal concentrations on both sides of the membrane. At Sekisui Xenotech, we offer the equilibrium dialysis method using the red device. So the red device has a base plate, which has a 96 well footprint, and it holds 48 red devices. The dialysis membrane has two sizes, a molecular weight cutoff of 8 kilodaltons or 12 kilodaltons, and hence multiple sampling is possible. The drawbacks of this method are, the drug may bind to the semi-permeable membrane, hence there is non-specific binding. If the membrane is damaged, protein might leak from the donor side to the buffer side, and hence you would overestimate the fraction unbound. 
And the another drawback is if you incubate your samples for prolonged periods, volume shifts may occur from the buffer side to the donor side, hence diluting your protein concentrations. The second method is ultrafiltration. This follows the same basic principle of the red device. That is the sample and the buffer is separated by a membrane. But in this case, it is assisted by positive pressure or centrifugation. Hence, this step is faster than the red device. The drawbacks again are the presence of the membrane could cause nonspecific binding. And the other drawback is molecular sieving. That is water from the plasma passes through the membrane faster, hence underestimating the fraction unbound. The third method is ultracentrifugation in which the sample is added to a tube and centrifuged at very high speeds for prolonged periods. And the supernatant has the fraction unbound, which is determined by LCMS. The advantages, since there is no membrane, there is no nonspecific binding. And the disadvantages I mentioned is it's a long process and the drug and the protein may co-sediment simultaneously. Next, we proceed to the study design we offer at Secchi's Research Tech and a data example. So microsomal protein binding studies are offered as a standalone study, or it may be part of a drug inhibition study. So what concentrations would we choose to determine microsomal protein binding? If it's a standalone study, we would uh, run the study at the concentrations requested by the client. But if it is within the drug inhibition protocol, the microsomal protein binding will be assessed at the IC50 concentration with the same microsomal protein concentration as the IC50 assay was run. And the impact of this binding will be discussed in the report that we provide. The study is divided into two main parts, the prelim assay and the microsomal protein binding assay. In the prelim assay, we will determine the stability of the drug in the presence of the microsomes, the nonspecific binding of the drug to the red device, and the time required to reach equilibrium. In the prelim assay, we have three incubation periods, 4, 6, and 24, which are typical incubation periods, and we test one concentration of the drug. For the stability assay, as I mentioned, there would be uh, liver microsomes included in the assay. But for non-specific binding and time to reach equilibrium, we would use SIP or UGT buffer, depending on the requirements. And based on the prelim assay, we would determine what the equilibrium time is, and that is the incubation time, which would be used for the microsomal protein binding assay. So depending on the results of the prelim assay, if we have good stability and good recovery, we would proceed with the microsomal protein binding assay with the time required to attain equilibrium. But if the stability is less than 75% or recovery is less than 50%, we cannot proceed with the red device. And an alternative method like ultrafiltration or ultracentrifugation would be of choice. But again, this would be decided by a case by case basis. Here's a data example in which we used one micromolar peroxidin with two different concentrations of human liver microsomes. 0.1 and 1 mg per mil. 0.1 mg per mil is the typical concentration we use for our drug inhibition studies. And 1 mg per mil is a concentration we use for our drug metabolism studies. And we tested these with SIP and UGT buffers. For each of these four experiments, we had three separate runs on three separate days, and the results were pretty consistent. The percent CVs or the RSDs were less than uh, 5%. And hence, we would be using peroxidin as a positive control for all the contract studies that we offer. So here is a summary of the variables for our protein binding studies. The protein would be human liver microsomes. The concentrations would be 0.1 or 1 mg per mil, depending on if it, whether it's for a drug inhibition study or a drug metabolism study. The buffer used would be that for the SIP or UGT buffer, depending on the client's uh, needs. And the positive control would always be one micromolar peroxidin incubated for 24 hours. If you have any questions or would like to take advantage of the service we offer, please do contact us for further details and we'll be happy to help you. Thank you.